And now I am in a bit of an awkward position because I have to welcome her back officially, and I also uh, have to welcome her back personally. I asked uh, our chief of protocol, Ambassador Mossbacker, how I should address her. And so he wrote me a memorandum. He said, you could call her Mrs. Nixon, or you could call her Madam Ambassador, but I guess I'll just call her Pat. Welcome home, Pat. For 32 years, it is a partnership, forging a political career together, bringing up a family together. The bond strengthens with the years. She believes in it. She's always there, companion, helpmate, campaigner. They share in the joy of victory, but their bond is also tempered in the crucible of defeat. This trend does continue, and uh, he does become our next president, that he will have my wholehearted support. And then she shares the triumph of 68. The nation welcomes a new president and a new first lady. Pat knows that the White House is many things. Center of official ceremony, executive headquarters, but more than at any time before, it is the place where the people are welcome. At every reception, guests find the First Lady a hostess of dignity and warmth. In their first two years, the President and his First Lady entertained 13,000 guests at dinner alone. Pat is the President's Lady and more. Out of her desire to serve, from her deep interest and rapport with people, she emerges as a force in her own right. Her ready warmth extends itself across the nation. When the president begins his Legacy of Parks program, that's turning the idle government land into recreational areas, Pat goes there, participating in the fun. <laughs> Oh, you know, I'm going to be able to. Oh, <laughs> you know, really. They've got to have this for a golf ball. You know, see, Daddy wants to get a picture of you, okay? Now, you laugh at that. Pat Nixon comes to McLean, Virginia, Fort Custer, Fort Snelling, Medford, Oregon. The First Lady, elegant but never aloof, reachable. A new park at Borderfield, California, is cause for a visit to another country. A fence separates the Mexican people just a few feet away, but they extend their welcome, and she extends hers. I'm going to come around. We don't want to get a fence. Pat orders the fence taken down then and there. Later, there are other hands that stretch out to Pat. A rubella-stricken child seeking comfort and others equally in need. From the deprived to the infirm, Pat symbolizes a nation's concern. And that concern extends toward the victims of Peru's terrible earthquake in July 1970. Pat asked if she could come. They said, yes, please. And she brings not only money, but plane loads of precious medical supplies and aid in another way. Her very presence lends comfort. They know what she feels is real. She too is wife, mother, parent. And to this parent comes the special joy of Trisha's wedding in the White House. Lovely, as befits the First Lady and the President's daughter. And 
now she is officially made Madam Ambassador, the first president's lady in history to be so named. She travels to Africa as his representative to talk to the heads of state. She will brief them on the president's forthcoming trip to China and the Soviet Union. In Liberia, Ghana, and the Ivory Coast, she meets the leaders and she meets the people. To common man and to the exalted, there is the same gentle directness, the same human warmth, and they take her to their hearts. Nixon has seen and heard are a part of her mind and heart, and she will bring the report to the president. She will leave behind a legacy of affection, a renewed friendship between three African nations and her own. The trips to China and the Soviet Union are a new beginning in international diplomacy. The president and his first lady go there together. It's very difficult for anybody in public life to be uh, in the public eye all the time and uh, to maintain poise, character, to be an example, so to speak. But I don't think there was ever a moment when she was not the First Lady in her public appearances. On foreign visits accompanying the President, the First Lady lends the quality only she can. While he negotiates the somber affairs of state, she shows the softer side. Her rapport with people, her interest in them, creates an atmosphere of affection and trust. She represents best the President's policy of reconciliation, the desire for a people-to-people -people bond that reinforces the universal desire for peace. On her return from the Russian trip, Pat is welcomed by Congress in an outpouring of enthusiasm and appreciation. That quality which is Pat Nixon's to give is received by all and returned full measure. She has been by his side and she has been his ambassador through half a million miles, 75 countries in every state of the Union. From their bond has emerged this new force in diplomacy for goodwill, for concern. Madam Ambassador or Pat, she embodies something of this country at its best, a touch of the American dream.